Apple has just released iOS 18.2 and it brings so many new features that are so exciting to the iPhone. And let's get started with one of my favorite new features and that is Genmoji. So now when you go to your emojis, you'll see this icon right here, which will let you create any custom emojis that you can think of by just describing what you want. So for example, I'm a big fan of ice um, coffee. So I'm just going to write an ice latte right here. And if I tap done, it will automatically generate me an emoji of whatever I just typed in. As you can see, I just got my emoji of my ice latte and I can actually swipe to the right and I can keep getting different options. Now, by far the best thing about Genmoji is that you can also type in, for example, Nikias with Jack Russell. Doc. Boom. I can type that in. I can choose a person, so, okay, I want myself in there. And then it will create, as you can see, me with Apple the dog, which is incredible. I love the fact that it's so easy to do. Oh, this is such a good one. And then once you actually like one, you can tap add, and then it will automatically add it itself within recent right here. So as you can see, I can actually use it. I created a bunch of them. For example, me with a podcast microphone. I did my mom. Apart from Genmoji being very fun to use, it's actually kind of useful because let's say, you know, you're in the mood for garlic pasta tonight, which is a dish that I love. So I can just type in garlic spaghetti, for example. So let's say, you know, you want to cook garlic spaghetti and you want to send it to your wife. Hey, I'm cooking garlic spaghetti tonight. So you can see it will give me a dish of spaghetti with garlic so I can actually add that, save it, and then send it to someone just like a standard emoji. Santa Claus dancing. Let's see what that comes up with. <laughs> it just did myself. Look at that. It's me dressed as Santa Claus. That is incredible. That is amazing. I'm going to send that to all my friends from now on. Now, what's also incredible is being able to unlock your door with your Apple Watch or with your iPhone. And one of my favorite smart locks, the Level Lock Plus, just got better because it's now got Matter support, meaning that it's not only compatible with Apple Home, but also with Google Home, Samsung Smart Things, and even with Amazon Alexa. And it's still got everything that we love about it. This invisible smart lock has such a distinct, unique design for being a smart lock because it looks like a normal smart lock, but obviously, it's got a bunch of smart features. My favorite one, it's got Apple Home Key support, meaning that you can unlock your door by simply putting your iPhone next to the smart lock and it will open. Same thing goes with the watch, but what happens if your battery dies? So you'll still be able to do it with Apple Home Key technology. You can open the door from anywhere using the app voice command with any voice assistant that you use. You can also share access to your friends and family. You can even add a level keypad and you can create custom codes if you've got a party or a dinner. And the best thing about it, obviously, is its security. It meets the high standards for durability, tested in over 250,000 cycles, and 136 years of average use. If you want to pick up the most minimalistic smart lock ever, check out the Level Lock Plus in the description now with Matter Support. Thank you, Level, for sponsoring this video. We also get a brand new app called Image Playground, and it's basically an image generation tool that you can basically, same as Genmoji, but it will create an image for you. Now, it will give you suggestions, for example, Let's tap on Nikias and let's say it's my birthday and it will automatically generate an image within that information. Extremely useful. That's me. I look kind of awful, but it's so funny. So maybe you've got a friend's birthday coming up and you want to send them a customized um, birthday icon. You can also swipe to the right and get different options. If you tap on these three dots, you can share or save the image to your gallery. You can also type in something. You can describe an image. So let's type in flying pig. For example, let's see what that comes up with. There you go. We got a flying pig and maybe we can put, we can add more suggestions. For example, love, flying pig. There you go, a flying pig filled with love. Let's add some fireworks to that. There you go, flying pig love fireworks. Let's add some party as well. And some, I want him to be part of or a race car driver. That is so funny. And maybe he's a hiker as well. <laughs> I mean, come on, that, that's amazing. You, you, that's amazing. You can also choose a person. So let's add Shenya in there. Let's get rid of flying pig. And let's give her all, let's get a race driver. So she's a hiker, love, firework, and party. There you go. That's Shenya as a hiker. And she's having a party. I'm saving that image. By the way, once you actually save all of them, you'll actually have all of them saved within your image playground 
app. Now talking about Image Playground, if we go straight to Notes and have something like this, Cats in the Beach, for example, if we actually highlight that, and swipe to the right, you can tap add to playground. And now straight from notes, I can transition that text into an image. I mean, come on. And then if you don't like that cat in the beach, you can just keep scrolling for a new one. This is so useful for students, for example, let's say you're studying about the Roman Empire and you wanna quickly add something to your notes on your iPad. All of these features are obviously available on the iPad as well. And let's say you like that one, okay save image boom and now i've now got an image of the roman empire straight into my note the next apple intelligence feature that i was waiting for the longest time for apple to release is this which cities are betting to be part of the next olympics do you want me to use chat gpt to answer that yes i do working with chat gpt so you've now got full-on chat gpt integration with Siri, which is just amazing. Here's an answer from ChatGPT. Several cities and countries have expressed interest. You've got India and like it will tell you all of it. As you can see, ChatGPT is actually using three sources and it will tell you like Apple will always tell you, hey, I don't know, like Siri, I'm not smart enough for this kind of things. That's why ChatGPT exists. So if you actually go into settings and then go to Apple Intelligence and then go to ChatGPT, from here, you can actually sign in with your ChatGPT Plus account and actually have full on access to ChatGPT directly with Siri, which is, I mean, come on, incredible. Who has scored the most goals in the UEFA Champions League um, in soccer? Do you want me to use ChatGPT to answer that? Yes, I do. Let's see. It should be Messi, no, Ronaldo first, Messi second. And then As Lewandowski. Now, the player with the most goals in the UEFA Champions League is Cristiano Ronaldo. It is so. Who has scored 140 goals. I mean, I'm so happy that we can finally have the confidence to ask or have a voice assistant on an iPhone that is as complete as it is now. We've got Siri. If Siri doesn't know it, we'll get the redirection. I mean, I'm just, this is probably one of my favorite features right here. We also have new voices for Siri with Apple intelligence. So if you tap on voice, now the English version now has American, Australian, British, Indian, Irish, and South African obviously all in the five different variation for all of those voices. Now users with iPhone 16 or iPhone 16 Pro have the new visual intelligence feature. So if you actually hold on camera control, you'll be able to recognize a dog breed. If you see a poster out in the street, you'll be able to snap a photo of it and it will tell you exactly all the info so you can save it, maybe call a phone number. Here's a quick hands-on with it. Okay, let me show you visual intelligence on my iPhone 16 Pro. I simply have to hold on camera control and then let's get up close to an object. For example, let's say I like these shoes right here. I simply snap a photo of it. So you can see it now it gives me ask or search. Let's tap on search. It will actually search via Google the image that I'm showing you. So let's say I like these shoes. I can tap on this link on this link right here and I can compare prices or I can shop it directly online. The coolest thing about it is that it doesn't only work for objects. It also works with landmarks. If you're traveling, visual intelligence can come in really handy. Check it out. I can simply snap a photo of the bridge. I can tap search, searching with Google, and it will tell me where exactly I am. This thing is beautiful. Now, visual intelligence also allows you to translate. For example, I've got this menu right here in Catalan, and I can grab visual intelligence, snap a photo of it, and it will automatically detect the language. So I can simply detect, um, tap on translate, and boom, just like that, it went from chocolate calenta café en trufa o bumbo to hot chocolate, coffee with truffle or drum. It's allowing me to translate all of that. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? We've also got a great update to mail. So if we tap this right here, we now have automatic sorting. So we have primary, transactions, we've got updates, and we've got promotions. So if you wanna quickly skim through your promotions or go straight to primary, it is way much more organized now than the way it was before. You've also got larger contact photos in the left. The new mail app design looks so much better. Um, something else that's new is that we go into settings and then scroll in the bottom to apps. 
and tap on default apps, this page right here is new. And what this page will basically let us do is change our email of choice, our calling app of choice. If you want to choose Chrome instead of Safari or Arc Search as your main default browsing app, you can do all of that. You can also change your keyboard, your contact list app for your wallets, your passwords app. You can even switch your app store if you really wanted to. This is basically the EU pushing Apple to do all of this stuff, but it's still nice. For example, I know a lot of people, my sister, for example, she prefers Chrome instead of Safari, which I don't understand why, but she does. So I'm sure she will be very happy about this change. We've also got a new feature inside of the Find My app for AirTag lovers. So this right here, if you've got a lost item, you can actually tap on share item location, get help finding your lost item by sharing its location with an airline or a trusted person. And what this will basically let you do is send a link to an airline if you've got lost luggage, for example. And that person who opens the link will be able to see the location of your item for a limited time. This is perfect for lost suitcases so you can send it to your airline. This is kind of genius. Whoever thought about this, definitely deserves a raise. We also get a slight new change with the Photos app. So if we tap on an image, the way that the animation behaves when I do this right here, before it kind of zoomed in, here's an example of what it did before, but now it doesn't zoom in. I like this so much better. It doesn't annoy me every time. It's kind of a fix in a way. I'm very happy about the new animation. We also got new features for camera control, which is amazing. So if we tap on camera and then tap on camera control inside of settings, this right here is new, AE and AF lock. So if we tap that, now check it out. If I open up the camera, I can actually hold, and as you can see, it will actually be able to focus on my hand. And it's exactly the way that a camera behaves whenever you tap on a trigger on like a Sony camera, you will hold it a little bit and it kind of focuses and now acts the same way with the iPhone. Apple is really giving us a lot more ways on how to use camera control, which is nice. There's also more updates inside of settings. So if we go to sounds and haptics and then scroll to the bottom, we now get a volume limit. So if you actually want to limit your maximum volume in your speakers, um, Apple actually says set a limit for how long your iPhone speaker can play audio, such as songs, movies, and other media. This limit does not affect for FaceTime calls, like calls, ringtones. So this has nothing to do with your like phone calls and alarms and all of that. It's just like music and social media and all of that. You can limit it, which we all have those parents that we're just watching TV and they just blast it. I mean, when I go to my mom's house and my parents' home, my mom's always like blasting. It's like, turn it down. I'm just gonna turn this to, to my mom. This is really useful for her. We also get a new control center widget, which is this right here. We can now type to Siri directly from our complication. Type to Siri was a new feature in iOS 18.1, but we can now ask, what's the weather? Boom, I can just type that in just like that. But it's really nice that there's finally a complication for that. Um, in order to add a complication, you simply add a control and then just type in like type to Siri, boom, just like that. And there's different sizes of it, which is pretty great. So that's iOS 18.2. Um, by the way, if you wanna download this wallpaper, it's linked down below in the description. Take a breath, I just released it. So definitely go check it out. Here's more videos for you to watch. You can hit subscribe if you found value out of this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.